My name is Adam Porzak with Porzak Golf, taking your game to the next level and beyond. We have a treat for you guys today. Kevin Lucas, Corn Ferry Tour player, getting ready for his 2021 season. We had a fantastic time with this guy. He is an incredible personality and an even more talented player. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and please enjoy the video. I mean, it's just, you know, that's what's so great about golf. You're just, you're just competing against yourself. It's unbelievable. It's so much fun. It's so much fun when you actually, you know, when you actually embrace that and you're okay with it. It's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. I have enough expectations and desires on my own that if I compete against myself and succeed in that, I'm going to have success at the highest level in this game. That's my thought. Absolutely. I don't need to compare myself to anybody to, to find that mm -hmm. success, you know? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think the people are unrealistic with their, with what they're trying to be good at. You know, people sit on a range and try to hit a seven iron at a target for two hours or a five iron. And it's funny how off a flat lie, off a flat lie. And you know, it's funny about that. All, that not only you're barely ever going to have that shot uh, when you play over a course of a round, those aren't the scoring clubs anyways. And you're not even statistically supposed to be on the green or next to the hole. So it doesn't mean you don't work on it. It just means that where you spend that time should be based upon where you're actually going to be able to gain shots or prevent yourself from losing shots, right? You're supposed to make short putts inside six feet. That's like statistically you're supposed to make those. So practice making those. If you're, you know, chipping green side, we're statistically supposed to get up and down from the green side, right? We should, um, you know, with bump and runs and things like that. So I think it's important for people to know what they need to practice, know that don't get upset if you're missing a lot of 15 footers. Well, what's the make percentage on a 15 footer? It's like a, I know all I know is it's a way better chance that you miss it than make it. And, 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 and it's not that you need to take that into having a negative attitude about it and thinking you're not gonna make it. It's just being realistic and understanding that this putt's not supposed to go in. So when it doesn't, hey, as long as you're two putting, you're doing what you should. And, and, that's, and that's important. I think that, you know, realistic expectations is what it comes down to. Understanding, you know, what actually is gonna lower your score in the game and, and not thinking that by standing on a range hitting a seven iron, five iron, that that's gonna do the trick. Um, those are simple things that help people not be too difficult on themselves. All right, buddy, what are we doing here? I'm just sitting, this, my Little stock, it's gonna be flighted, well, two hop, check, and probably yeah, triple pretend hop. Yeah, like, right? pretend like the front of the green's like halfway there almost. Yeah. Rode the face. Is that stuff that sticky? There's some sticky stuff there. Has the chipping been good? Yeah, yeah, it has. I really just have dumbed it down as we've dumbed down the swing, right? Simplified everything. I'm like, well, now I'm literally just thinking like left shoulder turn behind it like you talk about. Absolutely. And then, I mean, just getting it back here and then just. Return the shaft back and, to where yeah, it started. Return the shaft. Right, so I, I always feel like my left hand almost releases the club down to here, mm -hmm. and then I get this. Now, this is an experienced player that has been, if you look at his impact position and his full swing, looks like this, right? And we've been taught to do that our whole life. So for us, it does feel like when we're trying to arrive back to where the golf club started that we almost back the handle away sometimes and release the club head past us. For the average chipper, that would not be the feel. They no. would need to be have the golf club set naturally, and hold that do, angle, yeah. right? Maintaining the angle they start with. The big thing that I'm all about is presetting impact, impact position as much as possible. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, just get to your impact, feel it, rotate, rotate. Those are pretty, dude. Those are really nice right there. I mean, that for me is Good like my, my control. I, I know, obviously, the first one rode the face, but um, I just, I'm going to get that every time. Absolutely. Those and look great. The weight distribution is good. The setup, ball position. If, if I got a little, want runner a little here? more driver, a little more runner, I'll just put the hands ahead and, and then I'll just turn it through with the shaft ahead. 
almost can feel like a little draw-esque motion, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and what's, what's cool about that shot is this shot he's hitting right there is good for a 60, a 56, or a 54, or a 58, or 50, you know, whatever. It yeah. doesn't matter. You can hit that all the way to an 8 iron, you know. I've seen it up to 6 iron, but the reality is I, 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 when the technique's correct, personally i can use any club and get any trajectory out of it and you and you don't and, and really you don't need to go much past a pitching wedge when you have the right technique well i you mean look I mean? at how low this is and i'll land especially it, in american golf. i'll land it right here on that you know 15 feet on the green and get it to the hole with a 60. yeah it's just exactly past the hole. it's all about the style at which you hit it and the de-lofting, putting the ball back. Now, here's the thing. Where that actually comes into play, like a player would say, hey, why do you, why would you ever want to hit a 60 or 56 from here when you can just hit a, a pitching wedge? Well, look at this lie. Say that thing's sitting down the hole. Look at that hole right there. I know not easy to see because it's a little bit shadow, of a shadow. Down. But, yeah, you're looking at back of the stance right here, and you need to get an angle of attack on that ball right there. And you can see how low that ball comes out. Perfect. Well, guess what? At the amount I de-lofted that, it's important to understand that I'm now turning that 56 degree into what looks like almost an 8 iron, right? So with that said, the angle I'm looking to hit down on that ball because of the lie required this club. But off a standard lie here, this shot right here, if we're landing it right in front of us, this is a pitching wedge. There's no problem. All right. You want a little, little sauce, some stuff? What do well, you want? You know what, here, you know what we'll do? Um, Hit, 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 hit a grouping more to that back pin. And then okay. let's go over on the other side of that bunker and just hit like a regular pitch shot, you know, okay. where, where we're working on our... Uh, we'll, go, we'll go down over there right now. This is what I learned from Mac Jones, to always bring a towel with you when you're chipping. Get those... You never hit a shot on the golf course that the oh. groove's not clean. How tasty is this one right here? That was tasty. With a 56 with no grooves, by the way. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> one would ask why. Uh, because this club has become like a walking cane, a prop stick for me all day, and just like, oh, by the way, I'll show a shot or two here and there. Is it just like the straight sauce factory out in the desert, though? Oh, dude, because like, the lies are like this. Yeah, I need <laughs> just throwing the sauce everywhere. Ugh. All right, here we go. Let's give me the realistic ones. Here we go. Come over here. So we're sitting here. We don't have that perfect, you know, it's not like the nipper lie, right? Yeah. It's just, we're just looking to kind of... Hit it to that flag? Yeah, just, uh, and I want to see just good rhythm and good rotation, right? Because the rhythm alone, that which the ball, you know, you hit it, can make the ball land soft, even if you don't have spin. So, like, this one, because the lie is not as good, like he said, it's a little more into the grain and kind of all over the place. And sitting down a tad, it's not going to have spin, so I've got to put a little more height on it. Absolutely. And I'll just do that by opening it a little bit. So, and how we can do that, um, opening it, the club face a little bit more, obviously. Opening it more for the average player adds another variable, okay? And it makes sure you have to rotate when you open the club face. But the biggest thing also is just sliding that ball position up a hair. Yeah. You know, that's a really nice one, just those two I things. Play it, I play it more off the middle to a ball forward with my chipping than I do back. Back, yeah, because it just helps you kind of, does it help you rotate through it and get into it? Yeah, and in the, in the bottom, I'm not... If it, I like to use the bounce a lot, even on that. You see, I didn't dig, and by if it gets too far back, then it's leading edge, and then trying to expose bounce, and that's when you get the dropper. Mm, absolutely. Where if I have this, if I play this up, I could literally hit, hit the ground right here and still get a good shot. Oh, absolutely. Like exactly. I was talking about this earlier today. That was cool. I just I was, need more was, speed. Yeah, I was talking about this, um, with one of my students earlier this morning. You know, with the proper technique. You know, it's so much fun. You can you can get in here and throw that golf club into the ground, you know, well past the golf, you know, well behind the golf ball. My coach would always draw a line back here and say, hey, if you're not getting that shaft too much like this at an angle here, you're not then you're not going to use the leading edge as much. Yeah. So I would obviously just try to rotate dead hands. I really keep my elbows together, bud. You know, it keeps my hands in front of the center of my body. See how it just really slides. Like that sound is yeah. is everything. Go in. Uh. All right, I'm gonna hit a fucking nipper right here. Ooh, ooh, 
That thing was dancing on the green, dude. <laughs> Let's go. I, I left the white mark on the face. Did you just rip some? Yeah. Rip, rip the, uh, the dimples, rip some ball. Buddy Corey Pereira, fucking unbelievable bunker player. And I just picked his brain. And I helped him out with getting his wedge window, and I was like, "All right, let's go to the, you know, bunker, yeah, to the bunker." And I wasn't getting that plane. My plane was here, so it was like diggy, and just the short bunker shots were the tough ones. Longer were easier. Short was super tough, and so f for me, now, what I've been doing the last few weeks now, and my bunker plays tenfold better. I'm like gripping down to the shaft and getting and just trying to get this shallower shallower, or, shallower yeah is that right down wasn't is that right coach absolutely yeah absolutely yeah for that oh, shot that for that old. shot right there getting low is good getting low gets the shaft down lower and gets the club hinging up a little bit more as he turns there you go that angle that gets here provides a sharp angle down with that open club face just glances that ball and puts some spin on it and gets it high up quickly Mm. Mm. Beautiful. And then a little bit longer, I'm just gonna, same idea, just less. Mm -hmm. Just not as gripped down, not as, not as far away, not as open of a face. Yep, one of the greatest, um, Good short game piece of advice I can ha you know, have on long bunker shots. Just feeling a little more of a draw motion. Yeah. You know, just 100%. feeling a little more of a draw. I mean, I open the face. I feel like I'm going to hit a And then hit a high draw. I feel like I'm in a normal golf shot, and I literally just feel... It's like right there. Oh, sorry. That's perfect. And you know what I mean? All that is, is just, I mean, it's just me hitting a draw. Yeah. Me hitting the draw right there. What, what, what I mean by draw in the bunker, someone would say, what do you mean by hitting a draw? Well, I'm releasing my body more. I'm actually feeling like I released the club head more. Yeah. And I'm actually quite literally meaning toe past heel. A little bit of letting it go, what that does is it de-lofts the club face and shoots the ball out rather than undercutting it, which is something that you do to these short-sided pins. I like to let that club face go on those longer ones. You can see how he kind of lets it go and it shoots the ball out farther across the green. A really easy way to get more out of a bunker shot without having to necessarily take more club, which you also can do. All right, come on back here. Let's do it close to the pin. Closest to the far pin? Yeah. Okay. See, I need something on it. There we go. These will both be inside of five feet. Yep. Inside of three. Three feet. Ah, he is the pro. He's the one playing. I, I, hey, listen, we should get the, let's get the camera up there just, just so you can see how close, you know, how close Coach came. It's going to be, uh, I <laughs> barely did oh, though, didn't you? It's going to be close. Clear out the two balls in the middle that aren't ours real quick. It's like when you play bocce ball, you got to knock them out so you can see. But I got you. You did. Ugh. Hey, guys, guys. I was just going to point that out, Gabe. You know I'm always looking at the positive side here. I haven't, I haven't missed a putt like that since Wham broke up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you know what, though? You did say we both be inside five feet. Both inside did, three is not too I? bad. Yeah, that's right. I can take that. Still winning. All right. Let me hit a little, like, a little higher spin. This is a shot when you miss the green, you're like, you're bummed because you're short-sighted. You're not where you want. Yeah, exactly. But it's an opportunity to do something cool and hit a fun shot. Yep. So that's Absolutely. where you reverse the mind. I love it. So, you know, just run us. Hey, run us through real quick. Gabe, come on back here real quick just so you can see the lie that he has right here. He's got a ball below his feet lie. He has to, um, you know, a little bit of slope on the green here, a little awkward shot. What, just run, 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 run. This is going on. Yeah, run, run him through what you're doing here, bud. Um, Like the green, ball's... Below my feet to the right, a little bit of an upslope. Green's pitching away from me to the right. 
Um, so I'm aiming at that rake, really. And my landing spot is probably right there, yeah. Maybe a little further, that kind of shiny spot right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get collared. The last thing I want to do is leave this hit the collar or, or so yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go five feet on the green. What instead he just of said is a great point. Feet. I mean, you can see how steep this collar happens to be right here. This little drop off. That can and, make a really good shot 20 feet by the hole. Absolutely. So it's like, if you're picking it, if you have a bad line, you have to run it, make sure you're running it and landing it well short. If yeah. you're hitting a shot that you got to get up and over, well, Hey, get it a little ways past there. So we're not hit messing with that collar. See ya, buddy. This is, with this lie, it should have just a little height and some check and hopefully fall down to it. No, but I got away with it. Got away with it, yeah. But that one rode the face. And I'll tell you, for me, that means I changed my grip pressure at impact. Instead of letting the weight of the club head kind of do its thing. Stay on that upslope too. You can lean into that slope a little bit. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a little a bit. Tendency that I get is most. I'll, I'll fall with it. I tell most of my pros because they already do such a good job using the bounce. You don't want to lean back on the slope. If anything, the mentality is to hit into the slope a yeah. little bit. You know, because they're going to catch ball first anyways. It's not going to be a chunk. There it is. That's the shot. That's the shot. See how that was just very, very perfect sound. Advanced nicely, had a nice clip that to it. That was a good, Spun. a good uh, pickup there, Coach, because that's totally what I did on the well, first. What's one. funny is you know I you're around, you're around it as, as much as I am. You get to be around as many great players like Kevin. And I'm sitting here looking at the first one, and he's talking through it. He's saying all the right stuff, and and, and I'm looking at him. And I go, you just look like you're going to scoop underneath this a little bit. And what and, did you know what? He just scooped underneath it a little bit. You know, so still was hit pretty decent right there, though. Just yeah, I, I. Freaking! Do you have some grass in the face? I had grass, there and so it came out dead instead of. That's what that. happens. No, it, it is. You know, I um, Mike always pointed out how Lovey, Jamie Lamarck, one of his good buddies, always had a little brush right here, like tie it oh, yeah. on, you know, and just yeah. ch -ch -ch -ch. It's smart, it's smart. That's about as good almost as, as good as you could hit. Yeah, tough balance, but man, what a great shot that was! Right here. Yeah, right there is the spot. Oh, <laughs> this thing literally just, put white marks from the ball on that. That thing just hit. I mean, that was amazing, actually. Let me get that again. Yeah. And just for the viewer, this is a chipping green. One thing that's very important is, and we don't expect them all, all of our golfers to pick this up very quickly, but man, you can tell. These guys can tell. They had a couple chips here. They go to that first screen and watch one ball react from landing on it, and they can immediately adjust to know that the green that they were chipping on is nothing like the firmness on the golf course, right? So yeah. that shot right there that is almost buried would not have happened if that wasn't the chipping green. Beautiful. Good. You want to hit some chips off the green? Uh, off, yeah, I'd, I love doing that. <laughs> Is there one in the hole? I know, I thought I, I thought I did it right away. All right, gotta get closer, bro. Dude, last year at uh, our Corn Ferry event at Stonebrae in Northern California. Yeah, no, I know, know it well. First round, hit a par five and two, and huge slope and breaking like that. And because the slope was so big, if I putted it, it was gonna have too much speed. So I took my 60, checked it, hit it into the slope, checked on the down slope, so it actually had less speed than if I putted it, and I made it from like no. 70 feet. Dude. I have it on video too. You've got to send me that video. Oh, uh, I will. I eagled that whole three out of four days. Was that, what was that? Hey, is that the big down one like this? Yes. What a, what a, you know what? You know what's that funny? That pin was the front right in that. What a brutal golf course to walk and spectate on and play. I mean, but you know what? I kind of, even though it was cork, I kind of liked it. 
No, it's good. All right, coach. Mm. Oh, hey, it's explain, hitting divots. Explain to that camera how they how you're using that bounce. Oh, uh, so like I'm not taking divots here at all, and I'm not worried about it. And I even have the ball like middle of my stance, but I'm just trying to be long and shallow as I can. And I'm almost feeling like I'm hitting it like this way. So I'm not, if you see people that finish like this, they think they're not leading edge enough and they're not holding it. Well, it's false. They're actually holding this angle too long and then they're trying to release the angle. And then that's when they get the finish like this. Instead, as I tried to release here and I just turn, my club ends up right here, zero flip, all body like he just did. So for bounce, I mean, it's crazy to think that this ball is tight to the ground as it can be and you can still get underneath it. And I can even open it up a tad and still get underneath it and put some height on it on this. <laughs> You're just hitting those ball marks right there. They're is so it? good, they're so good though. Beautiful, Kev. Look good? Very. Mm. See that first bounce just popping straight up? Just putting so much check on that. Good. Let's go hit a couple more. What's that? Let's go hit a couple more. Yeah. I'm we hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson with Kevin Lucas. What a personality and what a player. We're looking forward to seeing what becomes of him in 2021 on the Corn Ferry Tour. Please click the link below to pick up three free videos and leave any questions or comments down below. We'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible.